Today's lecture is about the advanced architecture in deep learning right, on the topics of Siamese neural network. Uh, before we begin, let me uh, let me draw a certain comparisons between approaches in order to uh, in order to identify images. Right? You can have the image to be uh, recognized or to be verified. Right? When you create a system, your system can be able to uh, can can be a recognition system if the system has to learn the representation of data if it has to learn the class itself but you can but for the verification system the objective of such a system would be different the objective would be just to verify whether that person is uh, is exactly the one that you want to compare with or not that's the verification process so if you think about your iPhone, right? If you think about your Android, about the the way that mobile phone has interact with us uh, uh, for certain times here, you can see that a lot of uh, technology that has been incorporated into the mobile phone rely on the verification system a lot. That it has to be able to not recognize per se, but to verify that the person that it see, the person that it perceive, either using the fingerprint, the face, the eye retina, or the others, is exactly the one that is the owner of the phone or not, right? So in that sense, the verification process would receive input, and then it would try to match that into the ID, whether that, this is exactly this person or not. Uh, and and the, the output would be whether the image is that person or not that person, whether the, the image input is exactly the one that is stored in the system. Right. This is the verification process. Uh, on the other hand, the recognition process works differently. The recognition process, uh, the recognition process would uh, require you to train a model uh, that we're using a database of a number of persons. Right? You need to have that person trained with the model. And then uh, you can uh, use the input image right? and then uh, trying to predict the ID, uh, trying to predict the persons, whether this persons uh, belonging to that class or that ID or not. So in order to do the work down here, you need those images, a lot of version of those images trained at using systems for prediction. Okay. And for now, you can see that the, these two have different applications, although they are quite similar, because one can argue that, well, if you verify an image with a lot of images, then it is essentially classification. And you want to pinpoint whether this person is which. Right? But you can see that there are certain contrasts. For example, the first one, this verification will require just a few samples of data, while for the recognition, you need to have a lot of instances of data. Okay. The above has to learn just how to encode the data, just how to distinguish between the two, while the latter has to learn to recognize the image. If you want to create a system that recognizes classes of object down here would be better creating a recognition system but if you want to create a system that would tell you whether the two data are the same uh, from the same sources or not whether this is uh, whether they are images of persons speech fingerprint and authors right and that is the verification task well for example uh, the first ver verification system if it's received uh, to image here, uh, it will say that this is uh, Sanditam, right? It's me, right? Saying that they, these two these two faces are not the same, right? They are they are not the same. Uh, while for the recognition system, when you input the image input there, you it has to recognize that this is uh, peoples in the database. Okay. So in short, this idea of uh, verification and classification uh, introduce a new way of learning. It is actually not new. It has been used for quite a while, even before uh, the deep learning application. But 
Uh, the term has been coined uh, the terms one shot learning and, and, and later the few shot learning and a lot of variants there. Right? So, what does it mean by this short learning? Right? Well, the short learning. Um, this is by instead of learning to distinguish classes, the system or the, the model need to learn how to identify similarities between classes or between data instances. So the idea is to train the model so that it would learn how it would learn this function. This function is D, the distance between image one or image two, or the data set, the data, uh, the first data and the second data. It doesn't have to be image, right? It can be anything else that you can imagine uh, can be input into the deep learning system. And uh, to learn this uh, is to identify the differences between two data set. And if this difference is less than a certain threshold, these threshold parameters, then we would claim that the two are from the same sources. Maybe not the same image, but from the same sources, which can be the same person, which can be um, the same uh, well, the same product group. It can be uh, uh, data are from the same category. So you can perform classification using this as well. The idea of doing that can be done by uh, creating a spatial architecture of neural networks, uh, which is called the Siamese network. Right, and this is from Siamese twin that you have like two parts, uh, two two parts that act differently, right? So it's like that. We are going to create the two trap of input that going into uh, the same computational node. Right? So instead of learning to classify the inputs and to classify it to to task, the model the, would be uh, learned to differentiate two inputs. Um, note that. Although I am saying that here that it is due to input, but uh, just imagine that actually this idea can be extended to various architecture. Uh, still, you can have multiple inputs combining at the same time. This depends on the imagination, on the creativity as well, and on the test whether that uh, such a system would work or not. But well, let's take a look at this first for the CRMIS neural network. We are trying to compare two input and learn the similarity between them. All right. So how do we do that? Okay. Uh, so when we encode the data, and when we put the data into uh, the classification model, right, we put the data into the CNN, a virtual neural net, and then uh, doing the um, pooling so that we have lower dimension. And, and at the end, we would have this uh, coded, right, using the uh, fully connected and finally, uh, putting this uh, into whether the number of classes so that we can have the soft max of the final probability and getting the predicted results out. Uh, so this, if you take a look at this network, right, you can see that the objective of this network is to encode the image by doing convolution and get the feature maps, doing convolution, getting feature maps, until at the end, you are encoding it into a certain representations. And that can be like 1024 representation or 256 representation nodes, uh, which are a set of vectors that would uh, represent uh, the, the data input here used to perform classification. Now in the CRMIS neural network, we are going to repurpose the convolutional neural net uh, to be used as a mechanism that would encode the data from image into a certain vectors. And then uh, if these vectors are from the same person, then uh, we, we would hypothesize or assume that this final layer, or final encoding layer, should be uh, similar to one another, right? That means if we were to compare the distance between the fi in the final layer, the coded version, this should be small, while the other one 
should be large. Okay, so the Siamese neuron net would allow you to detect whether this come from the same person or not the same person. Like this one, right? So if they are from the same persons, uh, then you would find that this fx1 and fx2 should be small. Uh, when you do, when we when I say small, it can be the a types of a distance comparison. So for example, it can be like this one, uh, the square distance, uh, so the norm, the square of norm, or it can be the absolute norm, right? So at, as long as it's kind of compare the distance between uh, the two vector here. Actually, I have once implemented the CRMIS neural net, uh, not just uh, comparing this as the output, but I use this comparison to drive to do regression, like comparing not just different, but also the different in edges, right? in, in edge, difference in perception uh, of, of uh, part of image there. Uh, so for the original uh, architecture of uh, Siamese neural net, uh, we, we would have the two network, right? We call, we call them, right, that, like the original uh, lectures on this, uh, sister networks. Uh, these sister networks are the two identical neural networks, okay? Note that the sister networks can be convolutional, RNN, CNN, no, sorry. CNN, RNN, no, fully connected. It can be many types, but uh, there are certain uh, limit here that these network need to share the weights. Why? Can you give me some uh, rationality? Why do they need to share the weights? Uh, you can turn on the microphone and explain, or you can type onto the chat. Oops. Uh, again, uh, sorry, I didn't hear that. Why? Why do they need to share the weights in the Siamese neural net? I think if they use the different uh, set of uh, things, then we will have different features might get generated from the same image, and that will not match. With the features, even though it's generated from the features not match, and how comparing that image will not get uh, comparable, right? Yeah, that's uh, that's actually a good explain. Uh, that's a good explanation for the CRM neural net uh, as a whole. Uh, the particular reasons that uh, both network should share the weights actually take roots from uh, the earlier. Uh, lectures that we have on the regularizations, right? In the regularization le lectures, there is a concept of sharing weight. That when you're sharing weight, uh, it means that you are kind of delegating uh, the network to perform a certain tasks. If they have, uh, if they should have uh, the same mechanism, they should have the same weight. In this as well, if you take a look at the two sister network here, what you need when you take a look at the architecture of the deep learning of the neural network, you should think about the purpose. What are the purpose of these two networks? Right? The purpose of these two networks are to extract features. Right? They they are they are there to extract features out of data to encode the features as a vectors uh, like, and like your said, the friend said, and then we can use these two uh, feature vector comparing to one another to see if they are the same or not the same. That means uh, these two should perform the same task. Right? They should perform feature extraction. There's no reason that we should have the two as different networks because if we were to do that, there is no guarantee that the encoding would be the same when, when we perform like from the input up to the feature that are coded. And, and afterward, right, after we got, thank you, after we got this output here, we can then compare them. Okay, and there are actually a lot of variants for this architecture. For example, uh, one time, uh, instead of having this, I put, instead of having just the output here from the contrastive log, I put another network here. I put another, uh, 
another fully connected here before going to output. And that's fine, right? Because if you are not trying to compare the difference, but you rather use the difference to tell something else, you can do this as well. And well, there are actually lots of variations. This is just one example of them. Okay. You can even remove the contrastive loss and then put everything, uh, concatenate them and use them to do something else, right? But this kind of illustrate the way that you can design the architecture. You can have the two network that you can have the network that have two uh, sub network that share the same weights to, uh, to make them learn the same thing. This is a key of, of this lecture, not just that you can create a phase verification using uh, SNN, but there are a lot of variation to this SNN. And when you, uh, when, we, when we see the implementation, you will see that, oh, actually you can create a lot of variations out of this one, not limited to just by comparison, but you can add them, you can subtract them, you can concatenate them, you can put this into input add to another network uh, entirely, you can do this with the sequence data. You can combine the sequence data and image data together. There are plenty of ways that this can be done. And it has been done in a lot of variation, like you can implement uh, the architecture like this uh, to, do the, um, to do the question answer systems by putting question to one side, answer on another side. And then you have the question answer system like that, right? I will leave that to uh, the research presentation if you are interested in uh, the application of something related to this and the extension. I would welcome that. Okay, uh, so here you have the, the initial network which uh, the aims are to extract features. And then you have the, uh, the last layer here to compare, the, uh, to compare the coded output of the first layers together. And then the output would tell you whether this comes from uh, the same image or, or, the, or the same sources or different sources. Okay, so the key of, of the, the Siamis neural network or the SNN is the share weights, right? Because there are two sister networks that share the weight together. So it means that uh, it would have the same purpose. And this would allow the the model allow the network to, uh, I would say, be able to, um, because if you have like too many par parameters, it is quite easy to get stuck at the local optimum, uh, get stuck at the, uh, over to, to the more, for the model to be overfitting, right? But once you decide the task, if the same task, you have the same weight, this regularization would allow your model to be uh, less susceptible to overfitting. Uh, so that's not surprising that when you train the model like this one, comparing to the class-based classification model, uh, this uh, CRM is not it's harder to uh, be overfitted. Well, not all, this claim is quite ambitious, but well, from, from comparing the same model, right, when you perform classification uh, using class, uh, because uh, especially when you have a lot of parameters in the classification model, the model can be overfitted quite easily. But for the CRM neural net, the number of parameters will be uh, a lot less than, than, than the classification. Right? So each image, but in, in the training, the, the style of training need to be revised as well, right? Not just using something like the uh, cross entropy uh, to do the partial derivative, but it has to uh, be changed. Right? So each image would need to be paired with another one right? in order to train a model. If they are from the same sources, maybe you get the part, the, uh, the level of one. If not, you get the level of zero, and that will allow the system to learn how to distinguish between images. Right, so the, the network has to optimize using the contrastive loss. Right, there is a phase called triplet loss. What, what are they? Let's take a look. Uh, for example, yeah, try hard to use my own image sometime. Right, right. we have this anchor. Right, to compare with the positive image. And, and then uh, say this anchor, compare the positive image, and then they are uh, from the same person. Uh, we, what we want is that we want this uh, FA anchor minus FP 
the distance between them should be small, right? Be small in such a way that when you compare with the negative case, it should be much less than this case by a certain margin. This margin is denoted as this alpha. Okay, so this is like a threshold of difference between uh, the two. So what we want to learn is this is this loss. That is, we want to have this value as small as possible, and we want to uh, maximize this value. Uh, for my maximizing, it means that this minus sign would need uh, because it is minus sign. So maximizing means that uh, it has to be large. It may not be, make it small uh, with respect to this alpha as the margin. Okay. And then, and overall, the whole thing here needs to be less than or equal to zero means that you need to minimize them. This is the learning objective. So in order to do so, we need to have a loss function, which look like this one. We have this PI as the anchor, the input queries, uh, which can be randomly sampled from the whole classes. We have this uh, P plus as the positive, uh, which means that they are the, from the similar sources from the same class and P minus as the negative cases. Then we would use that to uh, denote the P minus. And the, the optimization need to be uh, done by minimizing this triplet loss. Right. This triplet loss is to uh, minimizing uh, the loss between uh, the similarity between uh, the instance and the plus and minim and maximizing the difference between the uh, the anchor instance and the minus the negative case. Okay, so and then we have this uh, finally. Right. Max um, so this is from the last equation uh, in inequality. Right, we have this uh, zero as the uh, maximum value, and this is the the loss. Okay, if this if the whole thing here is less than zero, then it means that we have like uh, zero loss. Else, we have a lot of loss. Okay, uh, and we can define the different here, different function here as uh, simply Euclidean distance. Um, but you will see later that there are certain other choices as well. If you can use the uh, Manhattan absolute distance there as well. Uh, the G is the alpha, the gap values that we kind of say that it need to be different at least this value. This is the triplet loss. Although there is a certain choices in training of the model. If you remember, we actually already encounter equations that look like this one in the last lectures. Oh no, yeah, the last lecture. Yeah, the one about embedding, right? When we train, when, when we want to train the model to learn embedding, the loss function of such training would require the comparison between the word and the context word, right? The context word around that. That's the positive case. In the meantime, the representation should also maximize the difference between the, the word and the out of context word, right? So this is the template triplet loss. Such a thing can be encountered in a lot of design. When you read the research paper, you will see that there, when, when people turn to, uh, turn to something that is like this one in one shot learning, few shot learning, in comparing positive case and negative case at the same time, in many, in, in many of those cases, the loss function would look really similar to the one that we saw here. Although this one is quite simple because we just want to say, uh, classify this image, whether it belongs to positive or negative class. But you can imagine that uh, this can be applied in a different way. It can be applied to do something like sentiment analysis, right? It can be used to compare and positive and negative as in question and answer, right? This is correct answer and incorrect answer. You can use it to train a multiple way of, of AI, a multiple way of deep learning architecture. It's just about this uh, idea. Okay, so that means uh, if this is the best verification, well, in, in order to train the model, instead of rather than using this uh, triplet loss and train them at the same time, uh, this is the mathematically, it will look like this one. But when you train the model, what you need is to have 
the data in pair. If they are from the same person, then you mark it as one. If they are from the different uh, sources, then you mark them as zero. You can see that this is quite similar to learning embedding. But in learning embedding, these two instances come from in context and out of context word. And then the model, the, the system will try to learn the representation, right? But in this case, the learning itself is not about the representation per se, but the, uh, the way that these networks extract features, encode them, and compare them. Okay? And, and here, this is the way uh, to perform uh, verification in, in binary classification. So, uh, so we can just need to put the two image and then encode them, compare them. If they are the same, put it as one. If not, zero. Right, and then train the model. Right, uh, let's take a look at the let's take a look at the code. Where is that? All right, here. Okay, uh, so uh, this is the code. On one shot learning. So what you need is to uh, initialize here right? using the uh, I I here I extract the data from the fashion mnist. Right? The fashion mnist is the data that uh, contain a image of the fashion products. Uh, let's take a look at them here. And here uh, I extract the data uh, X train master. So before that, let's take a look at the dimension of the data set first. Uh, this is uh, the X train uh, master not shape. The dimension is um, 60,000 times 28 times 28. If you take a look at the rendering of the image, here is the boot uh, shoes and a boot uh, pictures, right? So if we change it to like 10,000 here, then we have a back here. So this is this is these are images of fashion product. But in order to train with Keras, um, we we are now we are now encountering some problems that because you need to have the data that are formed as a list of two input sequence, and then we would compare the first one with the second one, and that would make us it it kind of forces us to modify the data set in this way that we need to expand the dimension of data right this is what i did right from the x train x train master shape from uh, 60000 2828 but containing no channel I need to put in the channel, so this is one. And then these are the auxiliary function. The purpose of this are to create a tuple here, tuple of array input. Okay, this will create a tuple of array input. Uh, you can have a different entirely uh, function to do this. Uh, I well, this is the the function that will give you like a tuple of images to compare by randomly selecting the choice out. Well, I used to have something like random the instance and then random another instance and just match them together. And that's one of the easy way to do it as well, right? And then uh, for this case, because what you want is to say whether they are the same or not. Uh, then this is the array of the target, which compare whether they are from uh, the same choice or not the same choice, right? And and we have this. Okay, uh, this is to create the equal class of X and Y, and then stack them together. And this get training data is to just uh, randomly selecting the data out. For visualizing the data here, right, this is just a function that would show you uh, the 
classes of that uh, something like what uh, we did in the CIFA 10 uh, last time to just uh, plot the data out of different classes and the same class these are the same classes and uh, yeah and then they, and then we can see that uh, if they are from the same classes then you have it as true if not then you have false And finally, if we take a look at the train data here, we have the train data in this format. Right? So this is the number of picture and the dimension and uh, sorry, the dimension of image and the number of channel. Right? So number of sample. The first one uh, will be used later uh, in the code in order to well create a two stream of input. Uh, now let's take a look at the CRM is on it on and what you need to do. Um, this function is created for generating a sub network, right? So instead of uh, instead of having the whole thing divided there, we need to create uh, this in order to uh, define it as a certain model because well, we have uh, for for this one it is like we have a model inside another model so we need to have one model created first this is the simple one model of um, cnn uh, between the three layers of convolution and max pooling and then in the creating classifier right we need to put this as input first this is left input uh, and right input uh, get this input shape in and the model uh, would take also the input shape. Then uh, the essential part is here that uh, we created uh, for because this the, the way we write it like this is to use the what is called the model API. That is, we are saying that uh, the model here, left input, right, need to pass through the model, this model. And the right input here also need to pass through the model. And with both of these, we get the encoded L and encoded R, right? The two uh, part of the output. And we can then use these two parts to compare to one another. And this is done by writing the TensorFlow using lambda function and then compare them using absolute. It's just, just like that, right? So this is the lambda of the tensor. And from this layer, uh, we then uh, we then use this L1 layers and then fetch the encoded L and R into this. So the tensor zero would be the first one L and the tensor one would be the uh, the second one uh, R. And we get this L1 distance, which uh, the result of this is the absolute difference between two tensor. Right? We kind of compare the two tensor, two vector together. And then we put the difference here through the dense layer. And just we, we can we, we just use everything and then put them to the dense layer, right? And then report it as one or not. If you want to do more, well you have you are uh you are uh you, you, you are free to do that by putting additional dense layer above, right? If you put additional dense layer above, uh it's like you are uh, after comparisons, you then trying to encode them, trying to weight them together, and then get the final output, right? And then uh, finally, for the model API, we need to tell that this model will receive input as a tuple or a list of left input and right input, then the output. Right. So this this will be the Siamis net. And uh, when we use the model, we need to we can just use the function get classifier model here and use a dumb well. Uh, this is a very small value uh, so that uh, it would kind of iteratively converge to the bucket. Okay, uh, your friend asks uh, whether. Uh, we will require the same size in terms of pixel size and pixel size to get different of L and R. Doesn't have to be. <laughs> uh, depends on this network. 
it depends on this network yeah depends on this network if the network can handle variable size yeah then then it would be able to handle that uh, but if that work uh, required for them to be fixed size means that you need to load image and then fix size first. Right? So usually uh, when people perform something like face verification using uh, this network, they would first run the object detection, the face detection first to detect the part of the face and then crop that out of the image before using classification. Right. Uh, when I created the CR Mistral Net to do a demand forecast, uh, I did not use the cropping. I just used the whole image and then fetch that to compare whether the products are the same as the previous existing product or not. And it works actually. It can retrieve the similar products from the past out. Right. You can use the same way uh, here to do. Uh, so, so you can see that the idea here is very similar to machine learning basic, uh, like in machine learning, there is the concepts of similarities, right? Besides classification, it's a concept of similarities. And in the concept of similarity, you can create a model like K nearest neighbor or recommender system. We can essentially do the same thing here because what we are doing here is to define and creating the distance, distance um, comparison model that it can produce a difference between two things. And then you can apply the same concepts as in machine learning. Okay, so to answer your question, it depends on this network. If this network has a fixed size input, then you need fixed size input. Um, if you are asking about whether the comparison here need to be the same length, yes. <laughs> uh, so it means that at the end, you need to have certain uh, dense uh, encoding inside so that it will have like the same length of code. But you can think uh, that, you know, right? You, you can imagine that input shape can be different uh, depending on, on, well, on the way you decide these layers. If you use, for example, if you use RNN, right? If you use RNN and then you want to compare this to text or you want to compare the question and answer. The, the final here, the final length here should be similar. But the one before that doesn't have to be, right? The one before that, the sequential part above here doesn't have to be, right? If you use RNN, then you can have variable length. And, and it's fine because it's sequence data. But in the end, it should encode to just one vector, okay? That have like similar. Well, well I, I, would, I would put it this way that it depends on the way that you reduce uh, output later on. If they are different, then you need a way to make them comparable. I, I don't want to say that if they are different, then you must not do that because there is a way to do that. For example, if you have two sequence with different length, you can do something like uh, putting them, concatenate them together, putting them to the dense layer. That's fine, right? It doesn't have to be comparison like that. Or you can have like doing something like dynamic programming. Right, doing comparison in that way. So that is also fine. So there, there are like multiple way that this can be done, right? If you have different requirements, right? But let's, let's look at the requirement we have here. The requirement that we have here is to verify whether the image come from the same class, do classification. Uh, that's why we do it this way. And, and train the model, right? Uh, one important thing is this as well, that we use the binary same binary cross entropy because uh, what we want to train is to predict whether this is from the same class or not. If the aim is not to identify the class, but rather doing something like regression, this has to change, right? If the aim, if the output is not just one class, but multiple classes, like you want to perform some sentiment comparison, then it can be like positive, negative if you create the system that way, right? So you can imagine that actually it doesn't have to be one, it can be multiple, but you, you, you need to use different activation function in order to do the job, right? So uh, you can see that, that it, this is fun actually. Uh, you can have a lot of modification to the network to perform different tasks, right? Hey, take a look here. So the architecture looks like this one. We have this sequential which contain the parameters about convolutional network, right? And this is like 2 million parameters. 
and the dense layer contains only 1,000 parameters. Uh, this 1,000 parameters come from 124 plus 1. Then training the model. Right. I have already created the one that is trained, but I want you to look at this first. Although, well, I don't think we should wait. See, uh, it, it starts from about 0.4 accuracy. Uh, validation accuracy is about 0.37. It takes quite some time though. You may wonder why a lot of epoch here. Um, the, the reason is that when you perform one shot learning or few shot learning, uh, you cannot perform well like in classification that you train everything that point to remember. Because remember, at each time that you train a model, what you are trying to train a model is just to distinguish between two input. There are a lot of pairing between input. For example, if you, if you have 10,000 images, comparing them with the full batch comparisons would uh, not, with the full combinations would be 10,000 choose two, which is a lot actually. It's like 100 million comparisons, right? So this is quite a lot of, a lot of pairs to compare. So mostly this will be done by randomly selecting. The, the functions above is just randomly selecting the pairs and then train it at each batch. I used to write something like the data generator, right? writing a data generator class. Maybe next time I will cover about this. But you don't have to have the fi This one is like you have a fixed wallet X and Y. But you can actually write your own data generator so that it would read the data and then produce batch of input to train the model. And so that you can, some, with this, you can have something like a dynamic batch. And you can even do something like train on batch, which you can do lots of things during training. Now, I, I, will, I will talk about that next time. Right, next time we have, uh, is, it will be the last lecture and I will, I will cover uh, about this, uh, this stuff with Kerastin. Okay, uh, you can see that it improved iteratively. Uh, validation loss increased from about uh, 0 0 0 0 0.39, 0 0.37 to now it becomes like 0 0.5, 0 0.54 uh, with uh, about less than uh, 40 iterations. Uh, the one that I gave you here, I think I trained it with 5,000 iterations. 5,000 iterations. Um, but, well, let's take a look at this 500 first. Um, each, of, each epoch take 0.5, so it will take 250 seconds. That means it's about 5 minutes. So let's take a break. Right? After the break, uh, <laughs> after the break, we'll take a look at the result here. Right? What I want to show you is in terms of the uh, the error trends, and you see that this is quite interesting. The error kind of fluctuates. Right? Take a break for say ten minutes. Right? We will continue on about um, seven p.m. I'll be back. Right, while we are waiting, let me uh, tell you some interesting architecture with the Siamius neural net. I'm going to share it as the whiteboard. Okay. For example, uh, if you say uh, want to uh, perform, what should I do? I want to perform something like saying that uh, if you have the data that are coded, uh, comparing the two that are not from the same domain, uh, let's say you have the two image. That you want to compare them, right? Uh, so of two people. 
and then uh, you want to tell uh, how difference in uh, edges, right? How different in edge uh, between these two persons, or maybe you want to tell that what are the uh, how how differ they are, right? In terms of the in terms of the well, if we use person, then should have been something like edge. So let let make it different. Then. Let's say I want to perform exam comparison. Whether this text explain the same thing as as it is written on on another or not. Right? You have this document, and you want to see whether another document uh, come from the same source or not. This can be done, uh, or, or if there are certain uh, similarity between them. This can be done by putting the two into the network that would extract the architecture first, we can think about that later. It can be RNN, it can be CNN. Uh, given that, at the end, this would give you a certain vectors. And then if you want to just want to, say, to tell that whether they are the same or not, then you can just track them, right? Find a different the norm. And then doing the same thing as that, right? Uh, that, that's one way to do it. Uh, another type of architecture that might be interest uh, to you guys is something like this. Let me... okay. So, uh, if I have that, a database, right, that have the like transaction data, and I have this, uh, this transaction data is about uh, the the product. Right? For example, you can have a, a company may have like multiple product to sell. And you have images of that product or a video of that product. And then you want to know whether uh, this uh, product would be comparable in, other, in terms of sales to another one or not. Then you can have uh, those, th those data items, the description, the video out here, uh, and then uh, put them into uh, a certain network. Say this is data one data item two then put them into a certain network right i'm not specifying them what they are right here uh but uh at here then compute the norm but instead of just having the norm then you can put this into another layer another network layers that would perform estimation of the output this output can come from the data preparation here. So essentially, well, if you take a look at this way, you want to interpret this, you are comparing data item one and data item two together. And at the end, you want to use both of them to estimate output, right? To estimate the output, uh, whether um, if the output are about the sales, uh, then uh, the other difference in sales, then what you are doing here is to compare whether the two items would have similar demands or not. If the outputs are about the, uh, well, it can be about any types of quantitative measurements, like sales, if they are about profit, uh, or if they are about the efficiencies of the systems, then you have a way that uh, train to train the system to distinguish uh, identify whether uh, the two con like may there may be the two configuration of the system would produce the same results or not. So, uh, so the idea of uh, Siamis neural net can be extended to do a very different thing. Like uh, because I would say that the core idea of this is not about comparison at all. It's about this part. It's about this part. It's about having shared weight uh, networks doing the same thing, producing the output, the coded output, and then you perform something with them, right? It can be performing uh, the performing regression, performing similarity matching, and it can be done in other ways. Um, well, you are interested in this. Uh, I think there's, uh, the, you can, Maybe your your paper has already covered about this one, so I'm look forward to 
uh, here about the thing that uh, maybe some of the papers that are listed there I saw that there are certain keywords that should fit into this uh, context as well and I look forward to hear about them all right so let's switch back to what we have in the training right right now is uh at the 231 right we now have 76 percent accuracy in validation set now there is one problem with the <laughs> with this example that i give you if, if you take a look at the above you will notice that train x train y and validate x and validate y are fixed which is not good actually because um, in such a network in this time network you want the you want the data that are wary you want to have something that is related to data to to generate the batch randomly just like in training the uh, training the embedding uh, you want to run them multiple times to train the embedding so that it would learn the representations uh, so this as well with fixed train x and fixed train uh, fixed validation well this is good for testing to to see though but um, it's not so good in terms of uh, the training the actual network or training uh, for it to be able to generalize uh, the whole thing uh, so maybe we can stop here, can we? 250. It's still improving though. Maybe we can stop here. And what I want you to see is not about the model per se, but the other thing. Stop, stop, stop. Okay. Now I want to show you this one, right? The uh, his. Oops, did I not save? I did save. But it has not been finalized. Ah, it has not been finalized. So, so no, the equation. Well, that's a pity. Oh, ne never mind. Uh, what I want to show you is uh, well, let's let's trace it uh, numerically then. Uh, is this? If you take a look at the loss, right, you see that when you train this Yamis yeah, neuron, uh, the loss will fluctuate a bit. Uh, the, the accuracy as well will fluctuate a bit. Sometimes it would uh, increase, sometimes it would decrease. There are certain fluctuations in the accuracy. That's because of the triplet loss that the model has to try its best to, uh, to learn the difference, not just in positive case, but also in negative case. This is good, actually. There are certain fluctuations, but in the end, they will converge to uh, a very uh, higher trend. Uh, and when you take a look at this uh, validation accuracy, the validation accuracy also contains certain fluctuation, but the, the trend would be uh, to indicating that they are better over time. So this means that the model learns something out. I actually have the well, the version that is already trended here. In the folder, it's in fashion. And uh, we can evaluate the test set. And you can see that it can predict up to like 73% accuracy, I think. I trained it using just a few, uh, maybe not as much as this one. Uh, we have just 100 iterations, possibly. Um, and the prediction looks like this when you predict it out. Well, it will give you the number to telling that telling you that uh, the input, whether they are the same, whether the input are from uh, the same classes or not. You may wonder what is actually the form of trainix. Right, let's let's take a look at the shape of trainix. Uh, test x dot shape. Uh -huh. Uh, maybe it's not uh, well this this is the test x is actually a tuple of two numpy array 
that's why I cannot use dot shape, right? Uh, but I can use np array uh, of the test x, and then you will see that this is actually just a tuple of two numpy array, right? A better way would be uh, to show you that this is uh, test zero of shape will uh, test x zero would have this uh, value, uh, and test y zero would also show you similar uh, architectures here. So it's just the list of two um, two tuple. Or you can imagine further generalization. You can have like three input. You can have multiple inputs if you want to make <laughs> not just like comparing between the two. And well, do it in in a cloud way, maybe uh, three ways prong, right? And and that might uh, well if you want to kind of find it. Uh, the the three are similar to one another. You can think about. Uh, additional architecture there. Oh, I forgot. I should change this to one. Right. So they are quite similar here. And then put in, into this um, evaluation, uh, you can have the, the output looks like this. Right. This one would uh, compare between the pair, right? From x0 of one first, sample, first sample and uh, x uh, test x1 uh, of the first samples and then uh, compare them here. Then we have the value here. Then you can do the uh, uh, retrieving the one that is similar uh, to this one, right? So in in this case, in in the verification, if we have two instances, we can definitely uh, compare whether they are from uh, the same classes or not. Uh, you can adapt this to perform classification by compare one person to a set of persons, and then this is classification. All right, so uh, because I did not run it through, I suppose that I will not be able to do that. So let's take a look at uh, ranging here. So this is the sorting of the prediction uh, with the probability of the prediction. I right? using model dot predict. I got the probability. Then uh, then range them in order to to see how will it perform. You can see that. The higher probability uh, are class actual, right? And and the low one has to, uh, are class one, and the, the low ones are class zero. Sorry, actually for one and actually for zero. Uh, yeah. So this is it, right? Uh, when with the architecture uh, that allow you to uh, compare between input, right? You can have a model that able to uh, code data and perform comparisons with this type of architectures, right? So this is the end, right, of, of today's lecture. Uh, it, it, it's quite short. Uh, next time, we, all, we will also have another short lecture like this that focus on the, the, the well, the, another architecture, interesting architecture of uh, deep learning network. And I will also show you a way to write the, uh, the to, to write your own data generator and doing something like uh, batch training, right? that the data generator will just generate a batch of data uh, to train with the model. Okay. Any questions about the CRMIS neural net? Okay, uh, try out the code that I gave you, uh, although you would probably need to wait for, uh, uh, try to study the code though. Um, important things are not about those functions. The important things are about the, uh, the uh, important thing about the code is not about the function, but it is about the, the structure of uh, let me find it. yeah the structure of data that you use as input because when you perform siamese neural net you need to use multiple uh, multiple input coming in and when and when you define it like this one like left input and right input the input format need to come in like this right? and the left input would be image with this input shape the right input will be image with this input shape 
and because keras receive input in the sequence of the first index to become the right the first index here when we expand dimension need to be the uh, the number of samples then it will just run through the number of samples and the latter ones are the dimension right? you need to have uh, a model that have this um, dimension the data that have this dimension to train with the model, right? So it's a matter of rearranging the data into this form. Uh, so you can write your own function to do the to do, to do, to do the job. Uh, in my case, uh, when I, I, I create the model with this, I would write the data generator. That generator data looks like this one, but uh, it would not generate them into just one one set of data. It would randomly generate them out. So let's see how it works next time uh, on the data generator uh, stack. Okay, so if there's no question here, uh, I will upload this video pretty soon. Uh, so if you, uh, you want to review or you, if you, uh, your friend missed this, it can be later on because I know that uh, tomorrow some of you may have to rise very early because of the preparation. Uh, in any case, uh, see, you, uh, see you again next week. Right, for today, thank you very much. Have a good night.